Hey everyone, Adam Reapos Vox here, and in this video, I'm going to show you my completely customized 48 key Premiere Pro Audition, and there was another program, Photoshop, After Effects, etc. Custom Macro Keypad that I'm using on a daily basis now. So this is the Genovation CP48 macro keypad. It has 48 completely pro programmable and re-legendable, which means I can, uh, it, they have translucent keycaps that I can put, you know, stickers or pieces of paper or whatever labels underneath to label them for myself so I know what I'm doing. I've already done a review of this and that review will be up in the YouTube card icon up there. It was a fairly long review as it's a really complicated product as far as functionality wise, but in terms, in a brief nutshell, it is just 48 customizable keys with mechanical switches that allow me to do pretty much anything I want on my computer. The review was a few months ago and Genovation actually ended up letting me keep the keypad and then I kind of put off actually programming it for quite a long time. With good reason though, because the night that I decided to do it, I started it probably 9.30 or 10 p.m. and I was not done until 6 a.m. and that was only done to a point where I was actually comfortable stopping for the night or morning, I guess, um, because there were still a few keys I needed to go back and program, but I had the gist laid out. Now, I can't take 100% credit for all of the ideas in this. I can't at all, because this whole idea started as being inspired by Taryn VH from Linus Media Group. He's one of their editors and camera people and things like that. He started doing videos on setting up custom macros in Premiere or custom keyboard shortcuts to do a lot of really cool stuff. And then I had the idea to map it to this. Now, some of the key labels I got are actually from him because in between when I was working on this, literally the night I was working on this, their video went live on Vessel in which he showed off that he essentially did this. He made a completely custom second keyboard using a full size keyboard. So I gave him 87 keys. So I used some of his key labels and then I used his template to make my own and I have my own 48 key keypad here. I don't have room for a full second keyboard, um, but I am going to be experimenting with a few other solutions like this. So this is this video's with the CP48. I'm gonna look into the X keys key stick that I could put on my monitor. I'm gonna see if I can use an IBM Model M keyboard to program the four, 24 programmable keys at the top in addition to this using and so use it as a normal keyboard, various things like that. So if you're interested in this kind of content, make sure you smash the like button and leave a comment down below. Now for this, I used a lot of Terran's auto hotkey scripts and heavily modified them myself. So I'll just do a quick run through of the audio keys that I have here. Um, the green keys are all audio processing. That's why they have little audio spectrum waves here. So I have on the left hand side, it actually pastes in clips as if they were presets. It actually just completely pastes in audio clips. And so I have a pop, a boop, a whoosh, a ding, and a buzz. Just kind of default stuff to just kind of get more used to using sound effects because I'm my sound effect game is very, very poor. And then at the very top of that, you see the little HD bars and tone. That's the little like cut, little the little, here, I'll just play it here. And so that paste that in as a preset here. And then the next four keys that are green, as well as this one that's in the middle kind of hanging out off on its own, are actually keys for Adobe Audition. I do a lot of my audio, I do all of my audio work in Adobe Audition. And so I've set my two uh, audio processing chains as hotkeys. So it applies one or the other one with either the Popmaster multi-band multi compressor or the hard limiter. And I've also done a tutorial on what I do for that audio processing chain. So if you're interested in that, again, YouTube card icon, search my channel. If you're interested in videos, a lot of people ask for videos that they can just search the channel for. So try doing that. Um, and then I have two for just basic effects, normalize and noise reduction, adaptive noise reduction. I've actually had a lot more success with using Adobe Audition's adaptive noise reduction than the traditional capture a noise print and use the noise reduction process as it seems to damage my audio much less than the normal noise reduction does. Maybe that's just me. And then the one hanging out here in the middle of transitions is actually a split my stereo file to left and right functions because most of my audio recording devices record in stereo, but my audio channel I'm trying to get a hold of is a mono file. And so on my audio recorders, I use the right channel on my, actually I use the left channel on my audio recorders. And then for my audio recording rack back here, 
video on that coming soon, get subscribed for that. Um, I actually use the right channel because that has the least amount of static noise stuff going on. And so it splits that because used to, in your file browser in Adobe Audition, you could just right click the file name and split it to left and right channel mono files. However, for whatever reason, that's a bug in the newest version and I've actually confirmed that with the Audition team, submitted a couple or sent them a couple tweets and went back and forth with them and that is a bug. You can still right click in the waveform area and split it to mono files and apparently you can set a keyboard shortcut and that works fine. So I've just set a keyboard shortcut to split the stereo file to two mono files just to make my life easier. Next, let's cover the transitions. I have a lot of transitions here and these are almost all exclusively from Taryn. Uh, the transitions aren't the key labels and key purposes are. So I've got a sort of linear wipe. I actually use the Impact Transition Pack. It's fairly cheap. I will post a link to it in the description below. They have two different packs and a couple free transitions as well, which are really, really good. And so instead of using the linear wipe in Adobe uh, Premiere, I actually use the Impact Wipe, but with a lot less blur than default. And I have essentially five keys of, or no, actually that's, eight keys of that. So the four corners, left, right, and then up and down, and then the iris. Instead of using like an, an actual iris wipe, I'm using the zoom blur uh, impact transition, which I find a lot more appealing. And then over here around that left and right split, I have impact push, left, right, up and down, impact dissolve or cross dissolve, and impact flash, which are all just kind of my basic transitions that I use on a regular basis. Then if you come down to the bottom, I have a pop out and pop in transition. They're not actually transitions because I, don't, I haven't found a way to do this with a proper transition yet. I really wish I could. So instead I'm just copying a preset of motion tracking to basically take something from 0% scale it all the way up and then from 100% scale it all the way down. And I'll figure that out later. But all of these I'm actually just using as having the macro, the auto hotkey macro, which again, I'll post a link to all of Terran's stuff because he's the one who, explains it all a lot better than I will. All of the preset macros, instead of doing what he does in which he actually copies it from a second timeline on his second monitor over to this, over to whatever your clip you're selecting, actually just have it search the search box and drag the preset over. So my cursor does have to be at the very start or very end of the clip for this to work, which can cause me some mistakes every now and then, but it's still quicker than me searching myself and dragging over works for me. Then I have, a, a few basic buttons. I have a search button to automatically just drag the mouse over and click search. So all I gotta do is hit that and start typing for whatever effect or other transition I'm searching for. I have a crop button to automatically click the crop or automatically apply cropping to the clip that I have selected in the timeline and then I can adjust it to my needs. Automatic warp stabilizer so it can automatically get that going and then remove effects entirely as well as a black and white button. I use black and whites for my little edit scenes and I don't use them as much as I want to because I don't have a button for it. Now I have a button for it. And then I have a few more paste stuff in clips, actually quite a bit more. I've got my three lower thirds, which has, are the little glitchy lower thirds that has my name, my Patreon link, and subscribe now. I've got one for my Epos Vox tech channel intro, which was at the start of this video, that's how I did it. And then I've got three over here on the right with a game controller, a Pokeball, and a video camera. And I made the game controller and Pokeball ones from images and textures. The game controller icon, as well as the entire video camera button, actually came from Adobe Stock Libraries that I get through my CC subscription. So that was handy. And those just paste in the lower thirds for their respective channels. So the camera is my vlog channel lower third. Uh, the Pokeball is my Pokemon TCG channel lower third. The gaming is my gaming lower third. I don't use a lower third on this channel, so I didn't need one. And then I have two buttons for scale to scale, 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 scale to frame size, which scales the file down to frame size and then your scaling of the size of the picture is based around that or set to frame size which automatically sets the scaling to that it, there's a bit of relativism that goes into how those work if you don't entirely know it's not going to make sense to you and then drop shadow automatically applies a drop shadow to the clip we're almost done i've got flip and flip and blur so <laughs> flip and flip and blur blur flip the two flip buttons flip it vertically or horizontally just copy a motion preset again the blur is a Gaussian blur of like 45% that I, I use for backgrounds and stuff or if I have an image and feature it and then blow it up in the background and blur it out that's what I use and then lastly we just have that's pretty much it we have two buttons that aren't actually fully working right now and these are the two ones that just look like a box in a line and those are actually to automatically 
align an image to the center, horizontal and vertical centers. This was intended for After Effects in Photoshop, but Photoshop, I can't seem to get that to work. Like there's even a keyboard shortcut for it. So that's what these buttons do. But I have yet to find a situation. This seemed to used to work in CS6. It's, I don't know if this is another bug with CC. They've been missing a lot of features lately. Um, but if I have a layer selected and I go to align, or I go to image and then go to align, align is always grayed out as far as I've been able to determine. So I don't have a clue what's going on with that. That's been driving me nuts, but that's pretty much it. And then it does connect by ethernet to USB cable to my computer. I edit everything in the macro software for basic keyboard shortcuts. And then I use auto hotkey to assign everything to a keyboard shortcut or the built-in keyboard shortcuts on Premiere or Audition or what have you. And then it just sits next to my keyboard and I just hit a button. Now it does take a little bit of getting used to and it'll be a little while before my muscle memory is fully like used to it. So I still have to look down and things like that. But once I get fully used to it, things are gonna speed up quite a bit. Again, I am gonna look into expansion options just because I love this kind of product concept and this has been a fun little obsession of mine for the X key stick of keys, a foot pedal of some sort just for one function like cutting or rendering or something, I don't know or maybe that IBM Model M keyboard, but we shall see. But I did promise a video that a lot of people have been asking about lately for the my completely tricked out Genovation CP48 control pad. Like I said, uh, Taryn did just put up, it is now on YouTube already. The, they did just put up a video of his entire second keyboard layout. So all of his stuff will be in the description below if you're interested in the actual code for this. Mine is not much different. Um, and that'll be pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos, and leave me a comment if you would like to use something like this for your editing or graphic design. This could be used for pretty much any thing in which you need productivity bonuses, basically. So let me know if you'd use it and for what, like if you're doing something other than video editing. See you next time.